Hello everyone, Steve Goodwin here, and it was my hope to have another Anchor Test video up and ready for you, but the weather has been very challenging for conducting Anchor Tests. Uh, the, the project I'm working on, which is uh, winch testing the 45 pound range anchors in the sandy mud, requires that I have either zero wind or perhaps very light wind out of the north or west. I can work with that, but these southerly winds that we've been having day after day after day uh, here in November uh, that it's just I just can't work with it. I did get a couple hours uh, on the morning of this footage, but uh, sure enough, after lunch, the wind kicked up and blew me off the water. So, uh, so skip the anchor testing. What we'll do is we'll get on with an anchor survey. This will be a continuation of the anchor survey that I did several months ago. In that previous survey, I simply walked around the boat yards and docks of Port Townsend, Washington, counted and tallied all the anchors. And it's a real simple study. There wasn't anything groundbreaking. I just simply wanted to see what was being used in this area. And now that the commercial fishing fleet has returned home for the winter, I was able to continue with the survey. I did also include a number of what I call commercial conversions. These are pleasure craft that were converted from former fishing boats. We'll start off looking at the Forfjord anchors. They are by far the most common anchors on commercial and fishing vessels here in the Pacific Northwest. Here's a common side bow roller. Notice that that roller is off to the side of the stem fitting and the anchor is horizontal in that roller and it works just fine. Here's a similar arrangement with a side bow roller but the anchor has come up and is stowed vertically. I'm not sure how a modern anchor would work with those but certainly they could be extended to make work. Here's a fishing vessel with the side hose pipe and a, a four fjord tucked in there quite nicely. Uh, this salmon saner has a centerline, dead centerline bow roller with a, a horizontal four fjord anchor. It looks like it's wedged in there with the flukes under the gunnel. This is a pleasure vessel that I believe was converted from a commercial craft. Has an old style four fjord anchor in a side hose pipe. Here's uh, another centerline bow roller four fjord anchor, but note that this four fjord has been modified. It has mud palms welded to the outer edges of both flukes, gives it more surface area and perhaps more holding power in softer substrates. Here's another pleasure conversion. This boat may have been purpose built as a pleasure boat, but it certainly has the lines and robust feel of a commercial vessel. Here is a faithful four fjord clone. Note the word sea hook on the fluke there. And here's the vessel that that sea hook four fjord belongs to. Perhaps it's yet another converted fish or converted commercial boat to pleasure. This vessel has a somewhat extended side bow roller. Looks to me like a modern anchor could work on that one. Here's another center line bow roller with no overhang whatsoever. So I imagine a modern single tooth anchor might interfere with the bow of the boat. Here is a nicely painted fishing vessel with an equally nicely painted four fjord anchor. I'm not sure if that means that this anchor doesn't get used much, but uh, there were several of these that were painted. Here is a uniquely tall bow roller that uh, orients this anchor very tall. This anchor does have the same profile of a four fjord, but everything else is different. It's much chunkier and thicker, uh, perhaps a homemade anchor, but I went ahead and lumped it in with the other four fjords. Note the plates on this vessel's top side that protect the hull from the tips of the anchor. These next nine boats I'll show you are part of the trawler fleet that winters over here in Port Townsend. They are a little smaller fishing boat, uh, but boy, they, they use the four fjords heavily. They're all on a, a center line or nearly center line bow rollers. Uh, some of them, like this one, certainly could accommodate a modern anchor, but uh, for reasons we'll talk about later, uh, they stick with these four fjord anchors almost exclusively. The gentleman that built this vessel also made his own anchor. It is a quite faithful copy of a Fjordfjord anchor and it and the boat, I must say, are just beautifully built. 
The stockless anchors are the next most common, although there's only about half as many as those four fjords. Uh, these anchors date way back into the 1800s, perhaps as much as 200 years ago. Uh, very robust, didn't see any of these anchors have any deformities or any bends. Uh, lots and lots of metal, uh, lots of weight, and I've, ne I've never tested one of these anchors, but I bet they are much like the Fjord in that they produce uh, perhaps very, very low holding power compared to modern anchors. Many of these have seen a lot of service. The galvanizing, if they ever had it, is long gone. Uh, but the metal is so thick that I, I guess it really just doesn't matter. You're, to, to waste away that much metal uh, would apparently is going to take many, many lifetimes. This is another pleasure boat conversion from a former salmon troller. The next most common style anchor found on these commercial boats are what I call a heavy Danforth. That's, that's not their real name or, or anybody else's term. I just kind of made that up. Uh, I say heavy Danforth because they are very heavy built. Uh, looks like big thick cast flukes, real wide shank, uh, solid bar, stock, and uh, they do resemble a Danforth anchor. But the most, most of these anchors did have bent stocks. I believe they were still in service. So they do seem to have some use, but I think right there, there is the, the reason why those, those two first groups of anchors stay in service on these boats. Apparently these guys are anchoring amongst boulders and heavy rock and uh, anchors that don't have uh, really, really thick scantlings just end up bending. Uh, once again, we see bent stocks on these, on these heavy Danforths. Uh, that one I couldn't tell. That one might have been straight, but I'm not so sure that's still in commercial service. This one here also looked like it was in pretty pretty fair condition. This one was kind of a homemade heavy Danforth with a severely bent stock, but still in service. This anchor was very, very old, uh, galvanizing long gone, and still in service. The next most common and only more modern anchor of, of any significance in the commercial fleet is the Bruce and their copies. Uh, the Bruce was the most common pleasure boat anchor that I counted here in Port Townsend a couple months ago. Uh, but th nonetheless, there were five Bruce anchors that I found on the commercial fleet. And I think th these, these guys have chosen these Bruce anchors over arguably better modern anchors because Bruce anchors do quite well with rounded fluke tips, uh, whereas pretty much all other modern anchors have got a very sharp point, and those points just aren't going to last long in amongst the, the big heavy rock. I should mention that Bruce anchors are not completely indestructible. One of the Bruce anchors that I bought secondhand on Craigslist, that was the 50-kilogram uh, model, it had about one inch of one of the side flukes that were broken off, and I've re-welded it, and maybe someday I'll get it regalvanized. but in any event, it's it's very strong anchor, but not probably in the same ballpark as those stockless and fjordfjords that were the most common. I counted three of these next most common anchor styles. I call this a homemade North Hill anchor, and unlike genuine North Hill anchors, none of these are collapsible. I believe this is among the more simple anchor styles to replicate or, or create at home. Uh, there's no curved metal. Even the flukes are just thick, heavy, flat plates, so you can just cut all these pieces out with a torch and with a grinder and a welder, and you're in business. I think the fact that we did not see any bent components or any, any deformities might be because they're just so, so easy to build, you could always make a new one or even just repair a, a bent one with a torch. There were two aluminum fortress anchors on these working craft. This is a smaller boat. Not sure how much anchoring it would do, but um, and maybe you might say it's an odd choice to have an, a lightweight anchor uh, on a on a heavier style work boat. Uh, this boat, you might question whether it is a commercial vessel. I don't think they are in the business of making money, but certainly that is uh, not a pleasure boat. So I lumped it in here. And and yes, those coast guard cutters do use an aluminum fortress anchor. 
I spotted two CQR anchors. Uh, this first one is easily the most undersized anchor for its boat uh, of this whole video that I'm showing you. Uh, the next CQR is more appropriately sized. It is housed on one of our local towboat or vessel assist style boats here in Port Townsend. This vessel had a fisherman anchor stowed on deck right next to its drum style windlass. And I did not see any sort of bow roller, so I'm not sure if anchoring is a normal part of this boat's protocol. And the last anchor that I was able to find on a commercial or converted commercial boat was this delta anchor. Note that the centerline bow roller is extended far enough forward so that the toe or tip of the anchor does not strike the nearly vertical stem. And I think that that is a factor, big factor in why a lot of boats don't choose more modern anchors, but clearly there's something else going on. I mentioned the, the need for strong anchors, but there also may be very strong traditions and perhaps these fishermen are just unwilling to change. Here's a shot of my boat, Panope. You'll see it has two anchors up on the bow, a modern anchor in a centerline bow roller and a forefjord in the side hose pipe. Now you might be wondering why in the world do I have those two anchors on there and I'm going to take this opportunity to give you a little brief history of how this came about. So Panope has been in my family for about 45 years now and about 20 years ago I decided to make some radical changes. I added that pilot house, removed a bowsprit, changed the rig, added more fuel and a larger engine aft and all that required the addition of some more ballast forward for trim purposes. Now rather than just adding more lead up forward, I thought I would do something useful and add a second anchor. And for guidance as to what kind of second anchor I wanted, I looked to the local commercial fishing fleet. Uh, the whole goal of this project was to optimize the boat for cruising between Washington State and Alaska, and that's just where those boats fish. And they all had four fjord anchors, so that's the anchor I wanted. I acknowledge that my experience or knowledge about various anchor types was a bit light, a little naive at that time. I certainly know more now. So the big question is, knowing what I know now, would I do this same choice again? And all I can say is maybe. On the one hand, I really enjoyed the project. Even hogging that donut out of inch and a quarter plate was a fun challenge. Uh, it's, it's certainly a, a, a safety item to have a second anchor that's always at the ready. Just pull a pin and away it goes. But Knowing what I know now, and that is that these four fjord anchors only make about one-tenth the holding power in, in some seabeds compared to the better modern anchors, I could easily have been talked out of doing that, that, that four fjord anchor. Uh, aesthetically, it's sure nice. The boat it does have a kind of a work boat sort of look, and that, hey, what's, what's saltier than a, than a side hose pipe and an old-school anchor? Maybe the big question is, will I be finding these boulder-strewn or rocky anchorages that the, that the commercial guys feel that they need these super strong anchors? Um, maybe. Maybe if I have a super strong anchor at the ready, it means my primary anchor doesn't have to be as strong. Well, that is entirely too much rambling, so I will leave you with the data from this final anchor survey that I will conduct. And as always, I really appreciate all the interest and especially the donations to my anchor studies. Good day.